Doan from the Arts Center in Orange, the Community Outreach Program in Orange, Virginia. And we're going to work on printmaking. Why don't you come on a little closer? Let's talk about it. Printmaking is a wonderful art. There's so many different types and styles. We're going to do an odd little combination, and it'll be fun. So take a look at these two. These two were done from the same plate, the same printing plate. We'll talk about plates later. This one up here, let's take a look at it. We use the same colors, I use the same colors on both plates. And I want you to check out the background, of course it's black, and that shows through as an, another color in the palette. So look at a lot of the black is really showing through here, right? More of an abstracted sky, less detail, in some of these corner pieces that you'll see in the other one. Let's look at that. This one seems as if it's in the sunlight more, less dark, more highlights, less dark edges and pieces, and maybe a cloudy or sky, these little white clouds in there. It creates a different kind of scene, more framed by these outer edges showing. Okay, both are interesting in their own right and just appealing just in their differences. You'll never get in this exercise that we're going to do today, if you repeat print, it's never going to be quite the same. It'll be along the lines of like mono printing, mono meaning one, one type of print. And yet we do have some things that are expected and similar. Come on over here. This one here, the pumpkin, has larger fields to work with less detail in here. And so it's gonna be a quicker action with working. And no, not so much doting necessarily, but we'll talk about all that over here. Come with me. So here we are, we've got some papers here. We've got black, we've got some interesting things. We've got temper paint. Here's our plates, thin little pieces of styrofoam, bendy bendy. Here are those pieces we worked with before, right? I pointed out. So printmaking can be done on styrofoam. It can be done on linoleum. This is a relief print. Printing block here on linoleum is very flexible. You carve out and the surface is what's going to be printed when you get it to the paper. Let me show you how that works a little bit on here. I was just testing colors and things like that. Different colors, different ways to do it. Notice how it's in reverse. When you print, you're getting the reverse, right? So keep that in mind. If you write words or anything like that, it's got to be reversed backwards and the letters going the opposite way. It's a little tricky. It's fun to practice with them. So we've got this linoleum, right? There are wood cuts, which I love. And that's what this exercise is somewhat replicating are the wood cuts. We have this, which is another relief type, which is just like the stamps, rubber stamps without the wooden blocks behind them, right? You've all used those, I'm sure. And then we have something called a brayer. It's our tool that we may be using a little bit later. And I have, what, what, cookie cutters, what? This is if you feel a little uncomfortable with drawing at first. And you need a little, a little bit of a starter. Fine, use something like that, trace it. Make a template of your own. If you need something that you have to trace on here, do it. Don't, don't feel hemmed in by any rules. There aren't any, really. After a few things going on with color mixing and all that, no rules. I've got brushes here and some pencils. I like to use an array of brushes, different sizes, and have them handy. I have a bunch over here, other things I might need, never know. Um, normally, I would rinse my brush really well and dry it really, really, really well in, um, with the water. Not This isn't a water project, um, but since I'm not going to do all that over and over again, I have these just to grab from. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start... Let me move some of this paper out of the way. We're going to start with this plate. There it is, that thin little plate. Here we go. So I'm going to use a pencil, not one that's super pointy, okay? That might poke through. So I'm going to use a rather dull one, but not too dull. 
but I'm just gonna take one of these here, one of these cookie cutters, right? Got some cute ones, coyote, little house. A little saguaro cactus, I like that. And I'm gonna go with these geometric shapes here, just for fun. I kinda like how I can play with these things, right? So what you can do is trace or you could press. Just press that in there, like you would cutting out a cookie, not too deep. We wanna cut through here, right? Can you see that at all? That impression? And now I'm going to do this. I'm just going to trace it. Here we go. So I'm going to just get in here and dig a little deeper. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to have some fun here. And remember I was talking about the woodcuts. I really like those. Old, old books. I'm gonna press in here just a little, get an idea. Old oh, books have those beautiful woodcuts. Gives a different feel. Try something else. Add your own flavor to things. a little smaller piece in here. It's going to be overlapping both. And maybe one more here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to use the brayer for this one. I've got some white paint on here and i got some blue paint and I'm going to mix them up. With the black paper, white is kind of like the number one paint because if we just go dark with all those dark colors, you really won't see it very well at all. So here we go. I'm going to move this out of the way. Maybe what I'll do is actually move some of that stuff out of the way. Now I'm going to roll on here. Okay? It's my brayer. Go forward. Up. Back. It's pretty. What if I want some green or something in there? Why not? It's a little this and put that there. Green. Let's see what happens. Put that brayer in there. I roll it around. Put a different color in there. Ooh, I like that. Make it a little more interesting. Don't worry about that. Okay. So, now it's all messy here, so we don't want to put the black paper down here, right? Make sure your hands are clean, too. <laughs> you need some paper towel. It comes in handy, and you'll need that. So here's my black paper. I'm going to pick up this plate, trying not to get my fingers in there too much. And I'm going to set it down. And wherever you set it, that's where it stays. I'm going to get another piece of paper towel and cover this up. So I want my one hand keeping it in place and just give it even pressure. Over here, down here. See how the paper towel is sopping it up a little. I don't want to scooch too much, right? Because then it'll slip out like that. Just did almost there. It's just what you gotta do. I'm gonna take this off. Now I'm gonna pry this carefully up. Now let's see what we've got. What do we have here? Ooh, I like that. Which way would I turn it? That way, maybe? 
it's just fun. Okay, so that's like the first print. What if I reprinted? What if I did something else with this? I took this plate, go back here. I'm gonna just reprint. I'm gonna get a little more green because I liked that green. More white. I throw that back in here. Kind of just do that layer, kind of starting off the edge. Go back and forth. Back and forth. And now I'm gonna take a pencil, okay? And I'm gonna go in some of these lines a little. Just to clean them out. I want more black to show through. I could wipe it with paper towel, whatever I want to do. I just want to get that groove back. Now, temper paint dries pretty quickly, so we can't do it too long. But let me just get in here. Did I miss anything? Am I going, you didn't get that corner by the... Well, we'll find out now, won't we? Okay, here's some paper. Back to this clean side of town. And then we're going over here. Flip it over again. It's kind of struggle sometimes. You go, which way? How do I? Don't worry. Get that paper towel again. So when it's when be careful with your first touch. Come back over here. Press gently. Can get that corner. Over here again. Okay, let's see. What will happen here? Ooh. Much more defined. Interesting. Kind of, I don't know, what would you say, 50s? Yeah, I like it. Okay, so that's if you need some kind of thing to trace and, you know, have a good time with it. Have fun. Explore. So we'll put this over here, out of the way. Move my plate, my stuff. Bear with me a minute. Okay, so we're going to do something else. Now this is getting messier and messier, right? So I'm going to add... Get to clean it up just a second. Get some different paper going here. Say goodbye. There you go. Okay, so my plate got a little dirty there. Don't worry about it, it won't matter. Okay, so now we're gonna do something different. Move that over. We're gonna use this sprayer again with these just to see what this does. I just want to play with this. I haven't used these in a long time, so let's see what happens. So this is pretty, it's got the spiral, yet it's squared off in these dots. I think it's very interesting. Let me show you these. This is less grooved in. I've used these with clay before, really fun. These are all kind of fun designs, aren't they? We'll go with this one. So got that brayer, got that color. Sticking with the color right now. Should I add something? How about, how about, let's try yellow in here for fun. See what happens. It'll turn it green, but it'll be fun. Okay. I'm just gonna start rolling on here. All right, hands are messy. Get that other paper you used before, right? Use it to clean your hands. There are a lot of different steps. So I'm gonna take this and put it here. I think this one's fairly dry, I'm just continue using that one. I'm just gonna press. Smoothing it in, see what happens. Lift it up. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Ooh, I like it. What will happen if I do it again without inking it again? Let's try it. Try it a little less vivid. Let's see. Yeah, I like that though because it's like far away. This one's closer to you, right? So you can have so much fun with this kind of thing. 
So I'm going to move this out of the way, and we're going to work with the plates now in a different fashion. Let me give myself a little more room, and therefore you get to see more as I employ my tools. Okay, here we go. So let's work with, should we do both of these? Let's try it. Okay, it's a little messy here, right? So I'm just gonna flip this over and come over here and go here, okay? So this one's the more detailed one, right? I'm not using the brayer anymore. I'm using this palette of color, a lot of white there. So I'm gonna take a bigger brush and I'll be working the sky part first. Take that white, put it over here. Little blue, little blue goes a long way. But I like the mix of darker and lighter blue. So I'll start with a fairly light blue. Not overmixed, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna swab the decks, I guess I would call it. I'm just gonna get in here and go around that flower. Not perfectly. It's okay, getting these little corners. Now remember, tempera dries quickly, but I don't want big giant globs like that necessarily because like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know, when you put that bread on top, it scooches it all out, and that'll just be maybe more blobby when you're doing the printing part. Get a little more darker in here, come on. I like that. And then I think, oh wait, it's a little too dark. I'll go over here. Get in these areas that would be the sky or the background area around the flower and the stems and the buds, right? I like the brush strokes that are left in this as well. It's nice. You'll see that we'll probably have to go over it again a little bit just to give it that zip because it'll dry up some. I'm just going to get that in there in a way that I like. Okay, so here we are. Now I'm going to put this down because if I start dipping in here, it's all going to be weird and different colors. So I'm going to get a different brush. And I'm going to do this wonderful flower. I'm going to take a little yellow and put it over here with the red and pull it in here and make it more of a peachy kind of color. I like that. Warmer, but almost coral. Very pretty. All right, so I'm gonna do these petals. Get in here. I'll have to refresh my brush from time to time, okay? I see something on there, I'm gonna wipe that off. More yellow, maybe a little more yellow in some of these, a little more red. It's okay, let's get in here. Don't worry if you got that, oh no! It's okay, we'll see what happens. You learn when you do this. That's the fun part. I learn something every time I do it. I love teaching it and seeing what people do too. That to me is the best thing. The ideas people have. What will you do? Oops, <laughs> what will you think of? All right, so I'm gonna add a little red maybe as a, as a deeper little hint here and there too just to see what happens. I've got that center. So I'm gonna take a smaller brush and get my, I'd like my center this time around to be yellow. I see I'm gonna probably take my pencil and go in here and get that a little bit more defined. And I have to come back. Okay, so back to this red, these buds. Little yellow in there. That coral color, that's sort of beautiful touch here and there, more yellow in there, okay, so now we've got green we're going to work with, take a little yellow, get in the green, a little white in there too, keep it lighter, more yellow, roll my brush a little so I don't have those big blobs coming through, I'm going to get in here, and take a little darker green, whip it in there too. Fun to just get loose. This is not 
an exercise for um, precision necessarily, right? Because you see how it works, right? You've seen it, You've seen it in action. I think I like a little bit more of that darker bit in here somewhere. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little teeny bit of green there for the heck of it. Get back here with that pencil. Get that off. I'm gonna get in there a little. I like it. Okay, so what about that outer edge again? We're back to that blue. I'm gonna go a little bit darker with that. Frame it up. Still thinking that against the black, it's not gonna show up if I'm just all in here with dark, dark, dark. I'm gonna go back in here too, just a little. Get at those little areas that might still need a little help. Don't worry if it gets a little green in there, it's kinda of pretty. little areas we want to see a little bit of color closer to our field. Okay, should we see what happens? Let's go. All right, so move out of the way everybody. Here we go, we got this area nice and clean here. Here's the black. I see something already. I can't, you know, I have to do this. This is who I am. I mean, like, ah, that's too dark over there. I don't like that. I think I'll add a little cream. It's even different. Yeah. Like, ugh. You see those things? You just gotta do it. For fun. Here we go. Put that down. Try to be perfect. Don't move it once it's touched there. Get my paper towel. And press. Nice and smooth. Just so you get that. Where I'm not really putting all the weight on it. I'm just getting the surfaces are going to be touching. I want to make sure. It's a nice time to just sort of take care of this thing you worked so hard on. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. Ooh. Now that will lighten up. Don't feel like, oh, oh no. But here's a little secret. This is what I would do. I would take this color here where I go. This will definitely lighten up, but I see here, I might want a little other color in there. What do you think? Later what I can do is put a little on there. I know exactly where I have to go, and I just line it up right there. There are really, really precise ways to do that with marking. But why, you know, I get a little looser. And then I would touch that on there again, that same petal, and it would get that light bit. And I would touch it up. But already it's changing. See how the colors lighten as they dry? I feel like I just came across it in a beautiful morning. Okay, we're going to do one more. That pumpkin. Let's see what happens with that. So we're going to work even quicker. We don't have all those details, right? So here we go with this one. As you've guessed, I like blue. Blue's just my thing. <laughs> and there are blue pumpkins, right? They're kind of gray blue, but there's all different colors of pumpkins. White, yellow, orange, combinations of them. You've seen them all, and they're so beautiful, aren't they? And they're just in people's gardens coming up. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna take that blue. I'm gonna put a little white in here. Start with a little bit of lighter color. Okay, um, you know, I'm gonna do the sky first, right? So I'm just gonna, as I said, kind of swab the deck, move it around. Maybe I'll get a little more white in there so it's like a cloud. So it's the paler part, since my pumpkin's gonna be pretty blue. I like how it's a little different shading there, right? Over here. Okay, so what do we have over here? We've got grass. You could make it browner. You could mix your these colors to make them brown, the complementary colors. You'll get a brown. Why don't we try that? 
Add a little green to that and I have got a nice warm brown. So I can throw that in there. And I don't think I want to keep it all that color, but it's kind of fun to have a different tone of color. So I'll go back here to the screen. I like the yellow in there. Add a little of that white. Let's get in here all the way like that. And it mixes with the brown in a really interesting way. A little more yellow. It's fun. Okay, let's get back here to that pumpkin. Here we are. I'm gonna start with a little bit darker. I can come back if my fingers get in here. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna get in here with this little bit of a different color. And I'm gonna swab the decks again. Remember, we're gonna move pretty quickly. I might take my pencil and get in on this one, just so I know. It's okay to go over a little. That I would prefer rather than underdoing it, you know, not having going around that. Oh, get in here so it's close. We have all of the paper covered with some kind of paint surface. So I'm gonna take a little white in here. Highlights. Good. add. I could add yellow if I wanted to. But I like that dark. There's something about that that makes it feel like it's rounder. And those little shadowy areas. Okay, so now I'm going to grab that green again. I might do that brown green for the stem. Get a little brown in that. Pumpkins are just so beautiful. They really are a treasure. Dark. Always thinking of those shadowy areas, right? That show up. Okay, we got that. I think it needs a little something somewhere in there, maybe a little blue. Throw that in there, just to see. Gets a little darker. Okay, we've got that little curly Q thing. We could just sort of play around with that, see what happens. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more of this. And I'm gonna do that pencil thing, and then I might touch up. So here's the pencil, right? I'm gonna make sure I get those grooves. I wanna see those. Wipe them with my hand. That kinda of jagged a little here. Let's go back around, gonna get in here. Kinda of like how that had grass though. Kinda of went over it. And then this little curly Q thing. Make it up. All right, I do like how that grass kind of went over there a little, so I'm gonna do that again. Okay, how's that sky looking? Oh, I can see where it might be a little dry. So, what do I do? I go back, and I do just a little. I'm gonna roll my brush a little so I don't have too much, but I'm just gonna go a little bit. I see the blobs, so I don't need to get that crazy there. Okay, let's see what happens. Move out of the way. Here we go. Got that black paper again. I'm gonna turn it over here. Oh, look who's on the back. A little longhorn steer. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I use everything over and over again. The earth is such a great gift. I try to always reuse things. Okay, here we go. Same technique, holding it in place with one hand. Smoothing it nicely and evenly with the other. Hoping for a good result. We learn every time, regardless though. Here we go. Let's see what happens. It's like magic when you reveal it. Ooh. And at first, remember, it seems so dark and you can reprint. It'll dry in a little bit. I'll dry right where we're here. And sometimes I, I'll do this. If let's say there's this one area that I see, oh, maybe I didn't get enough whatever or the line didn't go down enough, I might push it a little more. Push that. Get in there a little more. Show it a little more. Okay, it's already drying. It's a lot of fun. I want you to have as much fun as I did doing this, printmaking. 
go to it. Hey, and if you if there's any any examples, it'd be great to see your work. Send it to the Art Center. We'd love to see it and share it. Take care. See you next time. Bye.